In this session, we are going to focus on how to report data analysis and results from Smart PLS. I've got a few theses here that I've got from internet. So they are easily available on internet if you just search Smart PLS thesis or uh, thesis using Smart PLS. I've got another example that I commonly use or my students use and this also describes in detail as to how to report uh, the results from Smart PLS data analysis results or how to present format and structure your data analysis and results chapter. Now, before moving into this word document let's discuss a few published theses that are done uh, by scholars from some good universities all around the world. I'm not going to share the name but let's uh, discuss these few theses. Now normally it's either chapter uh, 4 or chapter 5 depending on the structure and format provided by the university. You start your data analysis and results chapter with an overview or the introduction of the chapter. So what does this chapter do? What does this chapter provide? So in here what you do is you basically describe what are the ingredients and what is included in this chapter. So this normally starts with reliability and validity that is your measurement model. So you describe in your overview that first you are going to focus on measurement model and later the focus is shifted onto the structural model where hypotheses are tested and if there is any other analysis that obviously is reported as well. Same is the case with this chapter. Obviously now they are going in much more detail and describing what sort of statistics are they are reporting. In another, again this is a very short brief overview of the chapter. But in most of the cases you will see that the introduction will include a description of measurement model that is the paper or the thesis actually looks into assessment of measurement model including reliability and validity and furthermore the structural model to assess the relationship between the constructs in this study structural model and in my example I've done the same apart from that I've added the hypothesis as well just to give an overview of what is to be tested in the structural model. So you start with your measurement model. A measurement model is used to assess the reliability and validity of the constructs in the study. Some thesis actually they describe the sample at hand as well and then they go on to the measurement model. Well this is very much possible and this should be done. You might have another section after introduction before the measurement model that is on the descriptive or description of demographics for the respondents. And then you go on to your measurement model assessment. So your measurement model assessment should, starts with, should start with reliability. So you state your reliability. Some scholars or some, some uh, supervisor prefer indicator reliability that is your factor loading and then reliability assessment using convex alpha and composite reliability. For example, here is the model to be evaluated you can present it as well. So they have reported directly onto so this is the response rate demographics as I mentioned earlier if there is missing data normality issues common method wise these are other statistics if required shall be reported. So these are the factors and these are the factor loadings. And then reliability alpha reliability for each of the construct with factor loadings. Well, there are different ways to present these results. 
one can start with presenting the indicator reliability that is factor loading and once that is done the next step is if you want to delete certain items that must be done uh, if the indicator reliability is low that is your reliability is less than 0.7 but you only delete items that are less than 0.7 if they are significantly improving your composite reliability and average variance extracted that is your convergent value so here is your item its mean its standard deviation its loading the t statistics and the composite reliability value what i normally do is i start with my measurement model brief, briefly describe the measurement model then i describe the factor loading what is factor loading its range and the minimum factor loading required and then the factor loading for all the constructs present now whether you are using a higher order construct in your study or you are using only lower order constructs you first start with lower order constructs if you have a higher order construct do not consider the higher order construct but consider its sub dimension and consider all the dimension in your study and present your loadings for example let's say here these four are the dimensions for csr but when the factor loadings are presented i'm not considering it as a csr i'm taking the lower order construct for csr all the four lower order constructs and the other constructs as well just run the pls algorithm get the loadings and report them here next step you should report the integrator multicollinearity you again run the pls algorithm and you will find these multicollinearity you can report them for both inner and outer model as well once there is no issue of multicollinearity and factor loadings and you are if you are delete an item obviously you report that you have deleted an item and the reason for deletion may be the vif value is too high over 5 or over 10 the factor loadings is too low maybe less than 0.5 less than 0.4 and removing that particular item significantly improves the composite reliability and average variance extracted you remove those items next step is reporting the reliability analysis for all the constructs in your study this consider all the constructs as lower order constructs and report the alpha value and reliability you may briefly describe what is reliability the threshold for reliability the range of reliability in your study and then finally a statement that yes all the reliability thresholds were met once the reliability is reported the next step is convergent and discriminant validity so these two form actually construct validity so the first thing is convergent validity what is convergent validity its range and if there are any issues of convergent validity you write them if there aren't then obviously you mention that there are no issues and you report your convergent validity that is your average variance extracted and finally you write your or you mention your discriminant validity in smart pls actually you get multiple ways to establish discriminant validity one of the most used formal and lacker criterion so you briefly describe what it is and whether your results show that formal and lacker criterion for discriminant validity is met or not so this is how you report it this change the square root of abe into bold and italic again you will see all the lower order constructs whether these later form a higher order construct or not that comes later so when you are doing your measurement model you have to take all the constructs in your study cross loadings another method to report discriminant validity just highlight the indicators for the particular construct so that you can compare the loadings with all the other constructs as well and finally heterotrait monotrait ratio htmt mention what is or how to use htmt the suggested threshold and whether your data meets the threshold and then the results are reported in the table make sure whenever you are putting a table you refer it into the text do refer the tables in the text moving on now if you have got higher order constructs 
let's say in this example i've got this is a higher order construct this is csr these are the four dimensions of csr so what if i'm considering it as reflective reflective how do i report the higher order construct validation there are videos available on the channel on how to validate it in this case the interest is not on validating higher order construct but how to report it so they must be reported as well and in this case if it is reflective reflective we have got the same criteria we report the alpha the reliability the ABE for convergent validity and the other results for an locker HTMT for discriminant validity how to analyze it how to do it the video description is in the link oh, sorry the link is in the description what if your higher order construct is reflective formative in this case again how to do it the link is in the description how to report it you mention your higher order construct you mention your lower order construct you report the outer weights the t value or the t significant statistics the p values of the outer weight the outer loading and the vif value for the constructs finally obviously uh, one of the issues with the smart pls is it does not give you goodness of it but rather it gives you model predictive capabilities r square f square q square how to report it you mention your r square how much variance in the dependent variable is being accounted by the independent variables you report your f square whether removal of an of uh, of an exogenous variable causes significant change in the r square for the endogenous variable and here are the effect size available in the smart pls and finally your q square if it's greater than z, uh, zero then the model has predictive relevance how to do it the video is shared in the description finally one of the most uh, used statistic for model fit is srmr and if it's less than 0.08 then you can say that your model is fit or has a suitable fit once you put all these things your measurement model and your predictive capabilities the final step is reporting your hypothesis what i normally do is if it's a thesis i first mention the hypothesis or my students mention the hypothesis what this hypothesis does and then what are the results same is the case for all the hypothesis and how do you report the results instead of original sample i normally prefer beta coefficients the standard deviation the t statistics and p value i normally uh, prefer putting mediation analysis or moderation analysis separate to the direct relationships so in when you are putting in your mediation analysis make sure you put the total effect the indirect effect and the direct effect in the text and then you mention whether it was partial full or a no mediation and this is how you report the results the total effect of iv on dv the direct effect in presence of the mediator of iv on dv and the indirect effect of iv on dv through the mediator so this is how you report your mediation results and finally you can report your model and if you have got any references obviously they will go in the end of the document so this is what i normally do and this is what you will see in the thesis as well that i have shared here yeah, reliability convergent validity then discriminant validity obviously more text be, can be added if you read more the model fit srmr or nfi nfi has to be over 0.90 and then structural model coefficient of determination r square the path coefficient that is your hypothesis so this is the normal way to report your results from smart pls again moderation analysis if you've got any moderation or any multi group analysis so obviously if you have got other tests or other um, type of hypothesis maybe mediation multi group or moderation obviously they can be reported as well in a similar fashion and this is another thesis they have done similar job predictive relevance q square r square and then mediating effects if there are any 
and then finally uh, the summary table can be added your model so this is the normal method that one can use and this is what normally is done in the thesis there may be different ways to report it this this the, the objective of the video is to understand what is normally done and what is the pattern or structure of reporting i hope the video would have helped you understand how to report the results thank you very much